The Galaxy Fold is one of the most talked about phones in years for three reasons. One, it's one of the first foldable phones in the world you can actually buy. Two, Samsung delayed the phone after it started breaking on some early reviewers. And three, and it is one of the most expensive phones ever at nearly $2,000. Let's see if it lives up to the hype in our Galaxy Fold review. You can't help but feel like a secret agent when you're using the Galaxy Fold. A virtual dual access hinge unfolds to reveal a huge 7.3 inch display. And the design closes up like a little book when it's time to slip it in a pocket. This dynamic AMOLED screen is the biggest you'll find on any phone, putting the Galaxy Fold closer to tablet territory. And that's the point. You get a big screen when you want it for watching movies, editing documents, playing games, and serious multitasking, and a small screen when you don't. So what else can you do with the big screen? There's two great software features Samsung pulled off here. The first is app continuity, which means you can start running an app on the cover display, open up the phone, and boom, it pops up on the larger canvas. It's instant and feels like magic. The second killer feature is multi-active window, which lets you run three apps at once on the screen. This comes in handy if, like me, you like to keep Slack running while you're watching YouTube or checking email. I like that you can drag files from one window to another, like moving a photo onto an outgoing message, but this doesn't work in all apps. I do have some problems with the Fold's design. The front cover display measures just 4.6 inches, which means it's fine for checking notifications and changing tracks on Spotify, but definitely not for typing, unless you're a masochist. The Galaxy Fold is also quite heavy at 9.5 ounces, and it's pretty thick when closed. This makes it a tight fit for a front pocket. So what about that crease? It's noticeable. You can see it and feel it, but it's more in your face when there's a white background on screen, and it almost disappears when there's a dark background. My last nitpick is the notch. I get it, that it needs to be there to house the front cameras, but it gets in the way when you want to do things like access the quick settings or watch videos. The side fingerprint sensor works pretty well on the Galaxy Fold, but I wound up using the less secure facial recognition just because it's faster. After the Galaxy Fold screen broke on some early reviewers, Samsung went back to the drawing board and devised several enhancements to make the Fold more durable. First, it extended the top cover display all the way to the edges, so Fold owners don't accidentally remove it. It also added caps to the hinges to prevent debris from entering the device, and they added a metal layer underneath the main display for rigidity. Yet, even with all of those upgrades, Samsung still cautions that Fold owners use a light touch when interacting with the main display. At two grand, that would give me pause. Also keep in mind that the Galaxy Fold is not water resistant at all. The Galaxy Fold certainly isn't lacking for cameras. There's three shooters on the back, a 12 megapixel wide angle camera, a 16 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. There's also a single 10 megapixel camera up front when the fold is closed, and a 10 megapixel main camera plus an eight megapixel depth camera for portraits up front when the fold is open. You can shoot with the fold open or closed, and I don't love either mode. In clamshell mode, it's hard to make out what you're photographing. Although again, there is a secret agent vibe. And when unfolded, you feel like you're shooting with a tablet, but at least you'll have a really good idea of how your pics and video will turn out. Overall, the Fold snaps detailed and colorful photos, as you can see in this close-up of flowers and this Manhattan skyline shot taken at dusk. However, the Galaxy Fold fell flat against the iPhone 11 Pro when taking portraits. Like other Galaxy phones, the Fold has a tendency to wash out faces outdoors. I do like the versatility of having an ultra-wide lens, as you can fit a lot more in the frame and get dramatic-looking pics like this. And the 4K video quality is pretty slick too, especially when you engage the super steady mode for cinematic clips. I wish Samsung outfitted the Galaxy Fold with the newer Snapdragon 855 processor for a performance boost over the Galaxy Note 10, but the regular 855 chip combined with 12 gigs of RAM proved plenty swift in my testing. I enjoyed smooth gameplay in titles like Mario Kart and Mortal Kombat, and the Fold held its own in benchmarks like Geekbench 5. As expected, it turned in comparable scores to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, but fell behind the OnePlus 7T. The iPhone 11 Pro Max blew it away with its A13 Bionic chip. With a massive 4380 milliamp hour dual battery system, the Galaxy Fold has pretty good staying power. On the Tom's Guide battery test, which involves continuous web surfing over 4G LTE, the Galaxy Fold lasted 10 hours and one minute. 
the Galaxy Note 10 Plus lasted a much longer 1109, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max lasted nearly 12 hours. The good news, though, is that we use the larger display only on this test. So if you use the front screen part of the time, you should have no problem getting through a full day. And if you need to juice other gadgets on the move, you can use the reverse wireless charging feature on the back of the Fold to power up your Galaxy Buds or your friend's phone. Overall, the Galaxy Fold is an amazing piece of hardware and is easily one of the most innovative phones in years. But is it worth $2,000? I would say maybe, but only for the bravest of early adopters. And that's partially because we don't know how this foldable design will hold up over time. And also because we know sleeker foldables will be coming from Samsung and other phone makers. If you don't have the deep pockets to afford and tote this phablet, I would wait for the sequel. Unlike some naysayers, I think foldable phones have a promising future, but I personally wouldn't spend two grand on that dream just yet. For Tom's Guide, this is Mark Spoonauer. And if you want more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe to Tom's Guide on YouTube.